Dear Damien, I'll never forget the day I met you. It was the late 1990s, and I was a student studying art history. And up until that day, I just thought of art as this, and I thought that this had to be the apex of modern and contemporary art. But I had a professor that often started the class with a bit of art news from a magazine or newspaper. And on that day, everyone was talking about this exhibition happening in London from this guy's collection I had never heard of. My professor handed me this magazine with this sensational headline in a full color picture of this shark in formaldehyde. And she claimed that this too was art. Could that be true, Damien? Could you have, with just one picture in a magazine, make me question everything I thought I knew about art? I didn't have an answer, and I remained skeptical. That is until I found myself in London a couple years later and visited Charles Saatchi's gallery. I walked in, turned the corner, and there it was, your shark in the flesh. And it was spectacular. Maybe my favorite piece I have ever witnessed with my own eyes. And I called all my friends and I declared, yes, this was art and that they must go see it in person. I started obsessing over your work. I learned about the medicine cabinets and decided if I was ever going to have the means to buy your work, one of these reminders of our own mortality needed to be in my collection. I found myself in London a second time, and this time you were selling all the contents of your restaurant pharmacy at Sotheby's. I still couldn't afford a medicine cabinet, but maybe, just maybe, if I scraped up all my pennies, I could buy a Damien Hirst designed martini glass. As fate would have it, I wasn't the only one who wanted one of your glasses that night, and as the bids got higher and higher, I was forced to drop out. But this only increased my admiration for you. You were making great art and making a damn fine living. My vision of the starving artist, or the guy that struggled and chopped off his ear, was gone. Maybe we could work in the art world together, follow our passion, while simultaneously having the success our parents always wished on us. You showed me all this was possible. And I know you don't hear this very often, but personally, I'm glad you kept making art the last couple of decades. Your recent work wasn't my favorite, but if it made you happy, I was all for it. You and I could always reminisce about those pickled animals in industrial vitrines. But then I just learned in The Guardian that you were still making copies of that earlier work and then pretending like you made them back in the good old days. It was like a dagger to my heart. Why did you do that, Damien? Maybe I should have realized this years ago, but it is now clear you value your bank account more than the art you produce. Our godfather, Marcel Duchamp, never did this. Sure, he produced work from earlier in his career, but he told us what he was doing, and we still loved him for it. There's this other artist I've recently become fascinated with. His name is John Rogers Cox, and he's pretty obscure because over his career, he made less than 20 paintings. His artistic output pales in comparison to what you have accomplished. But you know what he did? In 1946, he reworked one of his paintings he made in 1943. And again, he told us about it. He didn't lie, and no one was mad at him. It pains me to tell you that I agree with what Jonathan Jones wrote in The Guardian. In creating sculptures backdated to the days when his art electrified the world, the former YBA has cast doubt on his youthful legacy and destroyed our belief in his creative future. I'm so sorry you had to hear that, Damien. And a quick update on me. I've had a little more success over the years, and my modest art collection has grown by a bit since the days when I was outbid on that martini glass. But you know what? That medicine cabinet is now off my wish list. I'm breaking up with you, Damien Hurst. And yes, it's you, not me. With regrets, Christopher West. <laughs>